So welcome strategy battle gamers to another duet to a YouTube video. Here we host you Richard Damien and this is my hobby vlog number 35 and I'm on a sofa in a quite exciting twist if your lives are very boring and you find this sort of thing exciting. And I'm here because um, before I show you what I've been getting on with this week I thought I'd show you um, a few new bits. Um, if you've been following my vlogs particularly this year um, you'll notice that I made my you'll know that I made my um, 2016 um, box um, at the start of the year. Uh, which would contain kind of everything I was hoping to get painted this year and um, as we've going around so far so I've worked through um, the last few models of 2015 um, but um, over... is this all Christmas? yeah Christmas and um, birthday a few a few other bits basically arrived from some um, last presents which got added to the 2016 box because uh, I actually filmed that video before Christmas so I've got a few bits that have gone into it to increase it so I thought um, seeing as this these hobby vlogs this year seem to be having more of a narrative that they're following my um, 2016 box I thought I'd update you with what has been added into them so we have now as well three more Gundabad Orc Spearmen and I'm going to go out there as well and say that um, uh, I've got three more Gundabad Orc Shieldsmen coming as well. So in total I've got six more um, Gundabads um, to join my 12 existing ones. So when the uh, shields come I'll do some more conversions on these guys. Um, I could do with the other six to kind of um, make, uh, add to the variety of it. And um, hopefully they'll kind of get done around the same time as the other Gundabads. So that'll be cool. Um, I've also managed to get another um, three Lake Town Spim, so that takes my um, Lake Town Militia up to a full war band of 12 now, um, so that won't have a huge impact, but it just means I've got a few more guys. I managed to get a Lake Town Militia Captain, which is pretty cool. So um, all of those are obviously going in the box because my uh, next kind of three projects essentially are Champions of Dale, a couple of warbands of um, t Champions of Dale, what does that mean? Champions of Erebor, a couple of warbands of Lake Town stuff, and then um, and some Gundabads. Those are my kind of painting stuff that's going to take me hopefully up to about August time. So they're all going in there as well. I also got one other pretty cool thing, one of these um, wonderfully nondescript um, GW white boxes that I wanted. And this is. What do you think that is? There's lots and lots of lots. This is Shelob. And you may have seen um, Sam on an uh, episode of The Planet um, when I had all my Sams out. So yeah, I'm actually going to be in the clutches of Shelob set. There she is. Now, I don't have any particular plans to do a kind of Mordor force or anything, but Shelob um, is incredibly cool. It's one of my favourite parts of the book and favourite parts of the film, and I always really wanted Shelob. And it was quite surprising to me that this kit was still on sale really, not just because it was in metal, but it was one of those narrative kits. I think kind of having Shelob and having the sound model in it and having the little Frodo done up in um, cobwebs. And you don't tend to get that anymore, they tend to split those packs up so you know you can't get the Weathertop box or the um, old breaking of the Fellowship box or Ammon's um, uh, the Escape from Warthank or anything like that, any of those narrative boxes seem to have gone. So I wanted to, um, she loves such an iconic figure from um, the films and the books, so I really wanted to make sure I had this model in case it goes out of production. So um, I got her, and she is also going in the 2016 box, um, and she's in there alongside basically all those monsters. So if, again, if you watch that first video, um, you'll know that uh, basically after I painted the Gundabaz Lake Towns and um, Champions Variable, I've got some kind of fun stuff in there and she's going in there for that. So whether she'll get done this year, I don't honestly know, but she's going in there for um, to be in that kind of lucky dip once I finish those three big projects off to kind of think about painting something cool. And um, she's good in the game as well. I think she's a very effective profile. So yeah, I've got all these new bits and they've been um, added into my 2016 um, thing, which obviously knocks something back a bit, but it makes sense to kind of get these Gundabads and get these leg tellers done at the same time, if you ask me. So that is my kind of increased toy count, as it were. Obviously put my um, unpainted backlog up another 10 models or so. And what I'll now do is show you what I've been painting this week. And here he is. It's Gandalf. So again, if you saw my um, hobby vlog last week, you won't be surprised to see that this is the um, 
guy that I've uh, painted up this week. Um, this is what I was hoping to do. You saw him kind of base coated, I think, last week, and I'm pleased to say I managed to get him done. Um, so yeah, here he is, and I'm pretty pleased with him. I'm just trying out this new. I'm using the zoom on this for it. Oh, there we go. He looks pretty good there. So there we go. There's a turn around. That's the back. So this is now the fourth Gandalf I've painted. So again, if anyone uh, watches the plan to, he has now taken the lead in uh, most painted models I have. So I now have four painted Gandalf the Greys. And there he is. So overall, really, really pleased with how this guy came out. Um, I feel pretty relatively confident doing Gandalfs. Now I've done a few and I did the Dog Order one just before Christmas. Um, but it's always kind of a challenge, I think, trying to make some form of definition out of the robes. He's a lovely, lovely sculpt. Um, I really, really enjoyed painting him. He's, um, I got him back in the Metal Fellowship box um, in 2001 when it first came out. So I've owned this model for 15 years. Um, so it's cool to finally get some paint on him. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful metal model that um, was a joy to kind of paint, really. So this is the very first, if you don't know your SPG history, this is the very first um, Gandalf that was ever sculpted, never released. This is, I think for a lot of people, the definitive Gandalf model. I was really, really pleased in particular with the skin. I think for some reason on this hand, it came out particularly well. Oh, we lost it. Come on, back you come. There you go. Um, so there's his hand. Obviously, in classic Homo sapien fashion, he's got two. Is Gandalf a Homo sapien? don't know. Does a Maya become a Homo sapien if they take their form? Comment below. Um, so the way I did that was basically I used um, Elf Flesh and Tuscal Flesh. Elf Flesh to get the kind of basic flesh colour and quite pale, but then Tuscal Flesh to bring a bit of pink in it, just as the same as I did for Gladiol. And then I used um, Pallid Witch Flesh to uh, change between those and kind of get some lighter tones. Uh, but I think it came out really, really well. Um, yeah, for some reason, just stick on the hand. And I think we can kind of, should be able to see his face in there. Oh, not quite that much. Hmm. Come on, back you come. How much do you got those two? Okay. So I was quite pleased with what I managed to get in there. I think I showed you last week that I'd actually painted the eyes. Is that correct? I think I've managed to do the eyes before and had shown you that the um, pupils were on the cheeks and that I needed to tidy it up. Well, obviously now I have tidied it up and I'm pretty pleased with how his face came out. Hopefully see the kind of eye there in the pupil. I was quite pleased with how that came out. Uh, the beard was fairly... Um, pretty pleased with. And the hat as well. And uh, I'm currently recording this on Thursday night and I don't know if any of you have followed a rather interesting thread that me, uh, when I showed Emma this model, as I normally do, when I go, yeah, he's finished, she said, why have you painted his hat blue? And I said, because he has a blue hat. And she said, no, he doesn't. He has a grey hat. hat. And then we had a row. And I always think if your marriage is, if you're having rows in your marriage about the colour of um, Gandalf's hat, that's the worst thing you're rowing about, then you're probably doing alright. But we had a row about it, and that's why I posted up on the Facebook group um, to ask everyone uh, what colour Gandalf's hat was, and there were over a hundred comments, which was kind of spectacular. So cheers to everyone who got involved with that. And the overwhelming consensus was that it was indeed blue, but it's not cut and dry. So um, what do you think? Again, um, why don't we start this again in the comments below? But that was done with, um, ironically, <laughs> you're going to love this, it's a base coat of, it's based around Shadow Grey, which um, is a colour, obviously, a very famous Citadel colour that they've had for years, or they don't have anymore because it's not um, their uh, IP. But uh, it's blue, isn't it, fundamentally? I mean, come on. But maybe this is where the debate comes from. I think Shadow Grey is blue. It's a kind of bluey grey, at least. And there it becomes complicated. So it's based around, um, his hat was based around Shadow Grey, and then adding in more kind of pale greys and pallid witch flesh and stuff to get that. And then obviously um, the robes are just a selection of browns and these wrist straps are a selection of browns and I use my go-to browns which are Gawthor Brown, Rakath Flesh is a very pale highlight, Crack Stone and Steel Legion Drab. They tend to be what I do a lot of my um, highlighting with. I always base my brows with Rhinox Hyde really. And then obviously the vast majority of Gandalf the Grey is, in a shocking twist, 
his gay, <laughs> his grey robes, um, as you see here, and they were base coated with eschen grey, and then all I basically did was add in a bad and black to make them darker, and codex grey and pallid witch flush to make them lighter, and all I can say is I basically base coated it in coat in um, eschen grey, shaded it with a kind of mix of Arax earth shade and null oil, then highlighted with um, Eschen grey again, and then just kept adding the um, paler greys in to get highlights, and then the dark in to get um, uh, shadows. So there was no kind of base shade highlight highlight um, effect. I was doing basically what I did with my Merkwood Elves, where I was kind of once I'd highlighted, I'd then work a darker colour back in between the highlights, and then work a lighter um, highlight up. And that I found um, that's kind of been the breakthrough in my painting um, in the last sort of six months or so. I'd say that creates um, very much more natural um, colours, I think, and I'm really pleased with how this guy turned out. And but all told, there's probably I don't know maybe about ten layers of this, which you can afford to do, I think, when you've got a hero model, because you just it doesn't take too long to go around it. But you end up just you know put a dark bit of grey in, and put a light bit of grey in, put a dark bit, put a light bit, put a dark bit, put a light bit. Basically, what it allows you to do is just build up this um, effect that I think is um, very, very nice. So, um, there he goes. There is my latest Gandalf, which I think will be the last Gandalf I paint for some time. Um, I think the next one I do is in the 2016 box and it'll be the mounted Gandalf. I'll probably be painting around August sometime. So, yeah, there he goes. I was really pleased with him, and it's great to get this kind of iconic model finally um, done and painted and have him in the cabinet. Who knows, maybe um, he'll come to a tournament with me at some point. He'd probably be the Gandalf I'd choose to bring along now. I was quite pleased with how he turned out, all told. So, there we go. There is my uh, latest Gandalf the Grey. And I hope that's been, uh, in some ways, either interesting and... Oh, that's got a good shot of his face. Yeah, there we go. I hope that's been, in some ways, either interesting and or informative for you. Give you some idea of how I do. Just gonna turn him around so you can see the back in this angle. So that seems to be showing it off pretty well. And there we go. So with that, I'm on to the next thing. And for the first time, I actually think I'm gonna um, have a bit of a, sl a slight slowdown in my progress um, for the first time. So back here, as always, loitering, I've got the Champions of Erebor and those Gundabads assembled. And I'm now um, free to get stuck into them. But before I do, I've started feeling pangs of guilt, and I can't promise I'll do all the elves, but I am going to at least do some of the elves, and I'm going to start next with Megalus. So if you remember, that's not Megalus, if you remember, I've still got um, five elves left over from last year. I've got Megalus foot and mounted, I've got two Merkwood Knights, and I've got another Tariel. And, um, they're really annoying me. They're annoying my OCD that this is the end of that Thrandall's Hall's army. And they're sitting there and painting. And as you can see, I actually slapped some grey on Legolas's horse to get started on him, almost as an incentive that I have to do that guy now. Um, but, yeah, I really want to be painting this lot, but I kind of feel like I need to get these done. So I think I'm going to start work on Megalus. And I'm probably going to paint the foot and mounted version together, even though I don't normally do that for heroes. And that's probably what I'll be working on next. Just to warn you, as you watch this, it'll be the Monday, and I'm off to the Cardiff tournament, my first UHL tournament uh, of the year, which is into the West, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to that on Friday, so I've actually only got this week um, kind of four evenings to uh, to work on this stuff. Um, so my the likelihood is I won't have him finished for the first time next week. So sorry, but my progress is going to slow down slightly. Um, for the first time this year. So my hope is that Megalus will be complete in two weeks time. Um, and maybe, who knows, some more work on, oh, I don't know, the Knights, or maybe if I crack a Champion of Erebor, who knows. But yeah, I think I need to get this guy done so that he can um, take up a decent place in a warband alongside my Thrandall's Halls army. So yeah, that is my um, next plan. And um, hopefully I'll have some decent progress for that for you next week. So there we go. Um, another hobby vlog. Thanks as always for the um, great comments. It's very really nice to how much people are interacting with them. So please keep it up because it does keep me motivated. Thanks as ever. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Support your hobby host by clicking on the links below. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobby hobby and happy strategy battle gaming.